Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We have one of our favorite physicians yes. joining us at the table to talk health in the headlines. Please welcome back Dr. Frida Fisher. Yay. Yay. Thank one you. of our Thank favorites. You. All right, we got to talk about what's going on, obviously, in the headlines. Bernie Sanders suffered a heart attack. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, high stress work environments. And you just said he's going to be at the next debate. He's going to be at the debate. Yes. So high stress. High stress can definitely increase your risk for heart disease and heart attacks. Mm -hmm. When you have high stress, and it doesn't get much higher than being a presidential candidate right. in this political climate, yes. the high stress causes your stress hormones to surge. Mm -hmm. You get a surge of adrenaline, of cortisol. This can cause heart arteries to tighten. Mm. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you already have a plaque in your heart artery, as Senator Sanders, we now know, yes. already has right. a blockage. Mm -hmm. If you're in a high stress situation, giving a campaign speech, and those heart arteries tighten around the plaques, mm -hmm. you now have a blockage of the blood flow, the oxygenation to mm -hmm. the heart muscle, the heart muscle dies, you have a heart attack mm -hmm. in the setting of stress. It, yeah. So high stress. So yes. he's tripping. Yes. Where is his advice? If you were his physician, you'll be like, come bruh. on, come on. I'd oh. say manage your stress. Pay attention to your body. Right. And don't run. So he just, just going to be, like, no, just kidding. No, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> and, Senator Sanders, we'll see y'all at the next debate. Right. Yeah. But having a heart attack does put him at a higher risk for a repeat heart attack and even a stroke. Okay. So yeah, that's not cool. And, yeah. 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 Stress yeah. and even if he that. he's participating, I mean, in my mind, I would still be, I would still feel like, you know, I don't want to push too much. You know, then he can't be his authentic self. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And be as passionate as he is. Right. We all know that Bernie he turns very, up. He does. Very does. passionate. So he can't even be himself. I don't know. Oh, Bernie. But I wish him well. I, I do. wish him a rapid recovery. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes. He might have to Skype in it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, in recent headlines, you know, we just found out that uh, Matthew Knowles has been battling breast cancer. And it's not something we really talk about, you know, mm -hmm. mainstream with men having, right. you know, breast cancer. How common is this type of cancer amongst men? I'm so glad that Beyonce's father shared this because mm -hmm. you're right. Many people don't even know that men can get breast cancer, but over 2,000 men are diagnosed with breast cancer mm. each year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, by the time it is detected in many men, it's already too far gone because a lot of men ignore those early warning Ooh, symptoms. My goodness. Mm -hmm. And what are those early warning symptoms? Well, you can get skin changes. Mm -hmm. The skin can get hard or dimpled or look like the peel of an orange. Mm -hmm. And lumps. Mm -hmm. yes. Men can get lumps. And in men, it's usually near the nipple. Mm -hmm. You can also get nipple discharge or nipple bleeding. And bleeding was what Matthew Knowles reported. He saw mm -hmm. a little red dot that looked like blood on his shirts near the oh area of his nipple. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That was his presenting symptom. Oh, and, and then when you, when men are diagnosed, is it the same type of treatment or that, that women would go through? So once they're diagnosed, they get mammograms, ultrasounds, and they get a resection. Mm -hmm. So it is similar once they're diagnosed. Okay. The key <gasps> is to understand that breast cancer in men can happen so you don't miss it. Right. Mm, my goodness. goodness. Do, yeah. th this cancer thing, th Dr. Frida, speaking of cancer, just recently CVS pulled Zantac off the shelves because of cancer causing agents in the ingredient, well, the makeup of it may have had caused cancer causing agents. And now I have two questions behind that. First of all, if you've been taking Zantac, what should you do? Mm -hmm. And second of all, the, the, I don't know, the, this epidemic of cancer that we're seeing that doesn't have to be predisposed, that can, can happen to anyone yes. from man, woman to child, do you think that it is possible that there are more medications that have these cancer-causing uh, uh, agents in them that we don't know about, and this is the first of the ones, of the many that need to be pulled? Do you know what, Selena? This cancer-causing agent, nitrosodium methylamine, or NDMA, has already been found in certain blood pressure medicines, yeah. like wow. Valsartan, Losartan, those things that have been pulled. And it's a contaminant that's a byproduct in industrial manufacturing, wow. manufacturing of rubbers, of dyes, chlorination of water. So we have it, and we know that it causes cancer because scientists actually use NDMA to intentionally cause cancer in lab mice Get for cancer research. Dutch. We know it can cause cancer. Shut the front and the door. And the FDA, the FDA knows that it's been found in Zantac and ranitidine. Interestingly, even though CVS and Walgreens have stopped the cells, the FDA has not banned the drug. Oh my gosh. But I recommend that if you're taking Zantac or ranitidine, stop it 
and take something else like Prilosec, Tums. Mm -hmm. There are other medicines for heartburn. Yeah, but right. I, I usually went down to the CVS to get my Zantex. I couldn't find it. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to be pulled for, and I just start taking Tums. I have to start taking Tums. Yes, yes. I'm scared of everything Please. now. Man. I didn't want any of it. Right. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, um, let's talk about Cipro. I think that's how you say that's it. That's it, Cipro. Cipro. Which has mm -hmm. been uh, linked to, to suicide and suicidal mm. thoughts and psychiatric um, episodes. Yes. You know, you hear these commercials, like, and you have all these people, like, I feel so much better. And mm -hmm. then it gets to, could cause... Exactly. And, and my daughter exactly. said one day, she was like, why would I do that? I'm going to die. Right? <laughs> yes. You know what? Yes. yes. Seriously. What is happening? So Cipro or Ciprofloxacin is an antibiotic that's commonly used. Mm -hmm. It treats sinus infections, mm -hmm. bladder infections, bladder infection. and Cipro. the FDA has linked it to suicidal thoughts. We know of 174 suicides that have been linked to, to that, that class of medicines, the fluoroquinolones. And the thing is, the FDA does have a black box label letting you know that it can be linked to mm -hmm. psychiatric illnesses, anxiety, depression. But that label is buried in 38 pages. Mm. So who's really reading it? Mm -hmm. So now certain medical safety experts are petitioning the FDA to be more restrictive. But yes, yes. Cipro can be associated with Ooh. suicidal thoughts. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and to piggyback off of that, CNN reported that 46 million Americans are suffering from mental illness, but only 41% of that 46 million actually go and get mental illness help. That's true. Or will actually go get therapy and counseling to kind of mm. combat it. What if it's in the drugs that have absolutely nothing to do with mental illness that is perpetuating some of it that's going on in America? It is highly possible, and you just took it all the way to yes. the next level. My God, today but, I didn't mean to go there. You know, but you can Freeman. imagine if you already are predisposed to depression and anxiety, as many people are, and you take a drug like Cipro, it is possible that it can trigger you. There was a lady who parked her car on the side of the interstate, walked into oncoming traffic after taking sip <gasps> and it's being speculated that there was a, wow. an association. And, and does healthcare cover it when you're on these drugs? It should be a part of your healthcare. Right. Well, you know, 81% of employers actually do cover mental health, but a lot of people don't take advantage My because goodness. there's a stigma. Okay. So you have to be open, we have to right. talk about mental health and take care of our minds bodies and, and soul. That's right. And Dr. Frida always God. on point. We thank you so much for being here to get thank more you. information and tips. Check out Dr. Frida's Instagram at Dr. Frida. We'll be right back. That's just My too much. God. That's a lot.